Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So I want us to simplify this a little bit better because I don't want us writing queries even here when we want to read from the database, right? So what I'll do is I'll go to model.php, just like we've run the insert function here. I'm going to duplicate this function. I want us to create another function called where so that we can check because when reading from the database, this is how a query looks like. So as you can see here, it says select all from users, which is the table name, where, and then there is, let's say, email is equal to email, limit one or something like that. We don't need that though. Here, because we knew we were uh, looking for something very specific, just one row. But I want to recreate this dynamically, so I don't have to write this query. So I'm going to copy this just for reference, come back to model, and I'll put it here. So here, there's no need to remove unwanted columns because we're going to supply the key value pair, the array of data that we want to add here, where email is equal to email, and then maybe you want to say, and ID is equal to uh, ID something like this. So we'll supply an ID, we'll supply an email, both have to be correct for me to get that. So I'll supply an array instead that contains the key value pair of the things I want to search for in the uh, database, which will be right here. So we don't want to remove the unwanted columns really because whatever columns we supply here should be there. But let's run it for each loop anyway. So I'll get this query, move it over down here and do that. So select all from, and I want, I don't want to limit myself to the users table. So I'll end there and then concatenate to the query again. I'll say dot equals. And then this time I will put this, or I can do it right here. Concatenate this table. So whatever table that is will be used there instead. And then I need a where clause. So say where, and then the business starts there. So select all from, let's say it's users, where, and then now let's add to, so actually this is too simple to be on two lines. Let me just move it here and put a dot there. Okay, table where, and then let's create a where clause here. So what we can do is we can get the data itself because it contains the key value pairs that we need here. And if you notice, we only need the keys per se, right? Because these are just the keys. They're not values at all. So we can copy the keys thing that we did from there, right here. Let me just uh, put it here like so. So we get the keys. And then let's implode the keys again. So I'm just going to copy this. Let's come to this point. Uh, okay, let me try and up to here, we are fine. So let's try and do this. Where, and then we join this. So now I want to replace this with an implosion here. So I'll paste that. We implode the keys that are there. So if there are many keys, they're going to be here. And what's in the middle of these um, keys is that when we implode this with a comma, what the result will be something like email comma ID. This is going to be the result because if there are two items there, but I don't want this, I want email is equal to yeah actually this cannot work oh maybe it can actually is equal to email like that with a full colon there this is what i want to happen so when it implodes here this is the central part now i can't put keys over here so i don't think this will work out so what we'll do instead let's do it for each loops uh, for the keys right we don't need this key. We just need the value because the keys are zero, one, two, three, which we don't really need. So keys as a single key. So each time let's add to the query. So let's do that. The implode failed us. 
So what will happen here is we are adding where key, let's say the key is email, and then we add the equal sign and then put the full colon like you see here and then the key again. Okay, so I'm trying to recreate this part here. But as I'm looping, I need to have an and there, right? Let's put this in the center and do that. Just in case there are many keys, then you say key is equal to this, this, and blah, 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 just like that. So let's remove that. Okay, so that it becomes like this, and in case there's another one. But then the final one, since we are looping, at the very end, we'll still have these ands that we don't need. So we need to remove those. So here I'm going to see where I'm going to say query is equal to uh, trim. Now trim removes characters from the end and the beginning of a string. So you can tell it what to remove. In this case, I wanted to remove that and and space at the end. Okay, so once we trim that, that's the end. And then let's remove this. We don't need values. In fact, we didn't need values here either because we are not even using it. So let's remove that. Okay, so once we get here, we have a valid query. So I'm going to copy this and say, in fact, I don't need all of this. I just need to, the query is already there and the data comes with it. Okay, so this should work just fine. Now, if you want confirmation, what we can do is uh, we can try to run it and then echo the query here. So before we insert, so I'm just or before we check, actually here we need to check. We need a result. So I'm just going to say result is equal to this query and then let's get that result. And then we'll say if is array because regardless the result will be an array if it went well. Then let's return the result. Otherwise, <clears throat> sorry. Otherwise, let's return false. I think I'm developing a flu here. Okay, very good. Very good. So we either return the result or false. Mm -hmm. But if you want, we can uh, echo the query here so that you see it. and then say die. Okay, so back to the user thing here. Then we, we don't need this anymore. We can just remove it. We don't need that query. Instead, what we can do is, instead of saying query here, we'll say where. So this where, and then there's no need for a query anymore. We just want where the email is equal to whatever the value of the email that is. That's it. So that's much simpler to do. And let's see how that fares. Refresh. And then it ends there where now it has created this selector from users where email is equal to email. So it's working very well. So back to model. Let's remove this line. And everything is fine now. So this is how we'll be reading things from the database from now on. No more writing queries. Okay, so pretty good. And uh, yeah, that solves the problem. And what we need now on the sign up, well, let me come back here. Let's make sure it actually shows that that email already exists. Okay, that's good. So now we want to move the errors from there to here. So let me come back to the sign up page and I don't need this show post anymore. Show errors, I don't need either. So what I'll do here is I just want a value that says error. R remember that uh, data is sent through this variable if we want it to go to our view. So I'm going to use that data and add a variable called errors like this and say empty array from the beginning. And then if we get any errors, I'm going to read redo this again down here now if there are no errors this will remain empty just like it is here so no problem we can leave it there and then title and then all the errors if they exist will go through here 
if there are no errors, we will insert very fine. And then after insertion, we may need to redirect the page. So we will do that as well. But for now, no need for that. What I want to see is how we handle the errors. So let's refresh again to send the same information. And as you can see now, it's not echoing any errors, but once I click, it's not adding any new records either. So there are errors that we need to show here now. And uh, we can do that just by checking in the, uh, let's say in the array. So let's say for example, right now I know that the email already exists. If I go to sign up view, and this is where our email thing is. And there's this error thing there. This is invalid feedback. It has that class, but this is for our JavaScript. So let's ignore this for now. Let's do something similar though. Instead of invalid, uh, we're just going to say text um, danger so that the text is red. And since we are using uh, bootstrap, that's a class in bootstrap that converts the text to red. And so this will only show, we want this to only show if there are errors. So we're just going to check real quick here, PHP tags and say if not empty, and we are checking for inside errors, if one error with email exists. And then to maintain the P uh, HTML down here, we'll put a full colon instead and close that then we still need to put uh, an end if semicolon like that. Let's push that in, move that down there like so. Okay, so this is how we will show our error. And instead of writing this, we will just echo whatever the error is at the time. So I'll use the equal sign here to echo like that. Okay, errors email, just like that. So back here, let me try this again, create. And you see that it says that email already exists. The text is a bit big. So what I'll do is I will use small tag like that to make it smaller, create. Okay, much, much smaller. That email already exists. So it shows this. Now, if you want, you can even become more creative and add a border here, for example. Um, on the, on the input itself, there's a class here called form control, but if you say border danger like that, it will also make the border red, as you can see there. But this is permanent, what we've added here. So we can put an if statement instead to show it if this is not empty, right? So I can just copy this not empty part though it's a lot of unnecessary, looks like a lot of unnecessary code to add. So I'll put an equal, do that, and then close it here, okay? Now, if not empty, error emails, now let's put a question mark to make this an if statement. Then let's put single quotes on there, like that, and then put full colon, Let's not echo anything if there's nothing and then a semicolon there. But it seems we are missing something because there's a um, there's a bracket here that's not matched over there. So let me just remove that. That should solve the problem. So all we are doing here is asking the question, is this not empty? Then let's echo border danger there to show our displeasure for that email. So let me create that. Now, let me remove passwords so that passwords do not match, so that uh, once this error is fixed, it should move to something else, so that I show you that it closes once the error is fixed. So I'll create, and as you can see, the error has disappeared, even that red thing has disappeared as well. But it hasn't inserted still because there was another error, which is passwords do not match. We're just not seeing it here. So in the next video, let's put all the error messages properly and then we do a redirect 
to the admin section or to the homepage or whatever it is and then show that the user is logged in.